welcome everyone to today's webinar, Protocol Deviations, Documenting, Managing, and Reporting. My name is Marla Helley, and I'm going to be your trainer today. I always enjoy this course regarding protocol deviations because we're going to talk about why protocol deviations happen, the stakeholders and our level of responsibility when it comes to protocol deviations, as well as looking at implementation of a root cause analysis to prevent that protocol deviation becoming a practice. So really getting into why this happened, what we can do to prevent protocol deviations from continuing to occur. So for this course, we have several handouts which are listed here on the slide. And I will refer to some of these handouts during the course. So our learning objectives today, we're going to describe the components of a protocol deviation in documentation and reporting, looking at the stakeholder roles when it comes to management of protocol deviations, and proactively identify the process in which we are going to not only track our deviation, but also have an evaluation of the deviations to have a better management in our clinical trial because we know that protocol deviations is something that the regulatory authorities look at, but we also look at this as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So I think it's important that we first take a look at protocol deviations and recognize that protocol deviations are a fact of life. We are going to have a protocol deviation in our clinical trial. And this is something that we are going to also need to manage. One of the other challenges that we face is we have to understand, is this a one-time deviation or has this become a routine? Is this now becoming start of practice? where we now have deviations occurring routinely. And so we need to take and look at this. But first, I think we need to understand the definition of protocol deviations. And we can see here on the slide both the ICH definition and the FDA's definition of a deviation. So it's a change from our protocol and also it is departing from what we originally designed when we look at the ICH definition and also the procedures. And when I look at how we've defined our protocol, we know that we have procedures in our protocol that we've said that we need to have performed. And typically these are being done for one of two reasons. One, we are ensuring subject safety, so we have this collection of these procedures, making sure that we protect our subjects by performing different assessments, but also we're collecting information specific to our clinical trial that we need to know in order to determine safety and efficacy. FDA says that this is an unplanned excursion from the protocol that is not intended or implemented as a systematic change. So when we look at defining a deviation, do you believe that these terms are analogous when we look at deviations? So give a green check mark or a red X to the answer if you believe that violation, variance, noncompliance, or a change in research? Do you think that they're pretty much the same? What do you think? Yes or no? I'll leave it open to my team to answer. <laughs> we have yeah. yeses and noes. So, yeah, but I think most people said yes. Yeah, the majority says yes. Yes, okay. Um, you're right, they are the same. I mean, you didn't follow the protocol. You deviated from the protocol. Now, we know that we as sponsors can define protocol deviations as major or minor, and we're going to look at this. 
So the regulations do define a deviation, but we don't really see the definition of violation in the regulations except when we look at the CPGM BIMO that the FDA has created for FDA investigators when they go out to perform inspections at sites. 